Hey folks, today we're making tick tubes. Uh, if you're like me, you live up in the Northeast, ticks are a big problem. So every year around springtime, we wanna try and get these tick tubes out uh, to try and control the, the tick population. So what we're gonna do, what you need is, basically what you see here on the screen, okay? You need your toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes uh, that you may have collected throughout the winter. Same thing for your dryer lint, okay? Some permethrin and then a bucket with about two inches of water in there. And all we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the dryer lint, we're gonna take the permethrin, put some permethrin into the water, mix it up a little bit, put the dryer lint in there, let it soak up the permethrin, and then lay it out on this tarp and let it dry here in the garage, okay? So we're just gonna leave that open so it's a ventilated area, but what you don't wanna do is you don't want the dryer lint blowing all over the place. So, and the reason behind the tubes a lot of people ask me that too. What we end up doing is you take the dryer lint, okay, <clears throat> once we're done and it's all soaked, this is still dry, is you take the dryer lint, okay, and you stuff it into the tubes, all right? And <clears throat> once it's in there, the mice will come around, <clears throat> come into the tube, okay? Maybe they'll make a nest in there or they'll grab the dryer lint out of the tube and bring it over to their nest and use it in constructing their nest. Now, when they do that, uh, when the mice go out in the field and they're out running around, they pick up a bunch of ticks. And unlike a lot of animals, uh, they don't eat the ticks, but they bring the ticks back to their nest. They lay down in their bed of permethrin impregnated dryer lint and uh, kills all the ticks that are laying on their body. So the white-footed mouse is <clears throat> one of the, if not the uh, most significant vector for uh, the tick population. So that's why I want to go after them. Uh, and you don't want you don't want to take this permethrin and start spraying it all over your yard uh, because it'll kill a lot of other insects. And that may be beneficial, beneficial. and also it's uh, dangerous for uh, some animals. Like um, you don't you want to keep it away from um, cats and any type of aquatic life. So any type of bodies of water, you want to keep it away from that. So that's all we're going to do. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. And... I'll set up the tripod here and just kind of walk you through it real quick. Okay, so we got the bucket set up here and we're just gonna use about, um, just a little bit of this. Sometimes I like to fill up this side, know exactly how much I'm using, but over time I just kind of got used to it. Put a couple squirts in there. This is 10% permethrin. Uh, so if you're kind of doing your math, you know, you're gonna want a certain amount per gallon, but to be honest with you, I'm not gonna measure out every little bit of water. You want at least 1% um, or at least half a percent of permethrin, so. And I can leave some equations in the, in the description below, but all we're gonna do is throw our dryer lint in. Show you that real quick. All right, so it's just gonna get nice and soaked in there. That's all you need. And then we're gonna take it out and let it dry. Okay, so we soaked all the dryer lint in permethrin and just kind of wring, wrung it out and put it all uh, on this tarp right here. And we have it in the garage and it's just going to sit here with the garage door open in a well-ventilated area and let it dry out. Maybe it's going to take probably the rest of the day. It's still a little cool out. We don't want to leave it outside. We already said how we don't want it blown around, but also I forgot to mention uh, sunlight actually um, degrades the effectiveness of permethrin. So you want to make sure to leave it inside, but you don't want to leave it, or at least keep it shaded in a shaded area. Um, but you don't want to do it in your house because of the, the fumes that might be coming off. Uh, this stuff you don't want to have really on your skin. Uh, there's another permethrin that you can use on your clothing. Uh, not this one, uh, just a different uh, formulation. And that one's okay for your clothing. And just like that one, the permethrin will survive washes and... Um, 
you know, rain and things like that. So, uh, and another reason why we put in the tick tubes, right? We actually put it in the tube in order to uh, keep it away from the sunlight. So uh, in the next part of the video, I'll just show you uh, how I stuff these, how full I make the tubes and where I place them. Okay, so we're back with all of our dryer lint. Um, I left it out for actually a few days. I just haven't gotten back to this yet, but you really only need about one day. And it's all nice and dry. Uh, I still like wearing the gloves just um, for a precaution, but you shouldn't need to at this point. Uh, <clears throat> so all we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff it into these uh, toilet paper tubes. I had some paper towel tubes that I cut in half because they end up being about the same size and you just don't need that much. I'd rather have multiple locations than, um, than a bigger tube with more dryer lint in it. So I just usually take like a couple of these, maybe fluff them up a little bit and uh, stuff them into the, uh, ball them up and stuff them in there into the tube so they don't fall out, okay? That's it, that's all there is to it. Leave them nice and fluffy so the mice can grab them. Uh, a lot of people ask me a couple things. Number one, how do you know this works? Well, I know it works because I've seen the mice's nest and I've seen dryer lint in the nest. So I know they're taking it back to the nest with them. Uh, I know that the permethrin will kill the ticks. Um, that's common knowledge. And I also know that they're taking the dryer lint from the tubes because in, in years past, when I go back to replant tubes, I find them empty. And I stick them in places, and I'll show you that in a little bit, where you really can't get them there's really no way for this, this stuff to blow out of it. I kind of stick them under logs and things like that where I think the mice might be. Um, so yeah, some, and the other thing too is, you know, why not just buy these? Well, I looked up online and right now on Amazon, you're looking at $75 for 24 of these tubes. And uh, I make them basically for free after I buy the permethrin, uh, geez, five years ago maybe I bought this or more. And so I make them for free every year, just like this, a little bit of time, and, uh, and plant them around the, the property and we're good to go. So I'm gonna finish stuffing these, and then I'll take you with me and show you where I put them around the property. Okay, so here I am out on the edge of my property and just over by a wood pile. I like these spots a lot actually for placing the tick tubes because you have these little gaps at the bottom of the pile um, <clears throat> where you can just stick one in there. So I'll grab one and then just like that, easy day. Make sure it's in there pretty good. There. That way the mouse can go in there, they can check it out, grab the, the lint that's in there. But it's not going to blow away or anything like that. So there we go. So that's one spot. Here we go. Another great spot. Another tube going in. Just like that. Shove it in a little bit. It's going to get blown away. Good to go. On to the next spot. There we go. I just popped one underneath this log here. This down piece of wood. On to the next spot. A little stump here. Uh, just popped one right in there next to one of the root holes. Next to one of the roots. Created a little hole. So that's another good spot. On to the next one. I'm over here by this cool flat rock that the kids like to play on. And I'm just going to pop one right underneath here. There we go. On to the next spot. So I'm over by another one of these big rocks that the kids like to play on. And I'm about to put a tick tube underneath. And let's take a look here. Oh, what do we find right here? And no lint left. That's from last year or the year before. So 
Someone's been using it. So that's a good spot. We'll pop another one in here. Okay, just placed the last one. Just tucked it behind these rocks here. Tucked away in there. So you're just looking for places where you think a mouse might go. Uh, under logs, uh, near, I put a couple around my shed because I found mice making nests in there before and that's actually where I found them using the dryer lint. Um, but, you know, wherever you think is a good place, wherever you've seen mice maybe in the past, you know, you could try and kill all the mice, but when you're out here in the, you know, when you have a, a property like this that you want the kids to come out and be able to play in, you don't want to be spreading poison everywhere and you're probably not going to be able to keep up with killing all the mice. So this is one solution. Um, like I said, I'll have links in the description below to everything I used here, which is really just that permethrin. And I'll also have, also have the formula that I discussed earlier for uh, how much permethrin to use and how much water and things like that. So you can, um, the recipe, if you will. So you can kind of make that up yourself. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.